it's complete closing down. And I and think you, you have an action that goes with yeah, that. Yeah, I'm out of here, you know. I'm out of here. Yeah, and I, uh, I'm gone. You and know. what do you? What does she do that triggers that? What? Do, how does Kim move in the dance that triggers you doing this? I'm out of here. Body language. Uh, there's the tone. The tone. On the voice. The body language. And you hear. I hear the tone on her voice, and uh, you pick my up. senses. Just sense it. You know my. Like I was sharing with her earlier this morning, it's an automatic thing for my senses, you know. And You're I, monitoring it all the time. Mm -hmm. And what do you pick up from her tone that she's feeling? Fearful, angry. Actually, angry. angry is the you big one. You pick up angry. Yeah. Anger. And what you hear is that you're going to hear that she's disappointed in you. Yeah, that there's something wrong. You've done something wrong. Yes. She's going to get critical. Mm -hmm. And that's when you do this. And yeah, and I close up and I disappear. You know. You actually called it something interesting this morning. The igloo. Yeah, but that's sort of at the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. So when I when you disconnect from me uh -huh. and I try to pull him back in. You're trying to pull him back in, mm -hmm. but you probably sound angry while you're doing it. Yes, and uh -huh. Timmy had pointed out to me this morning that I can actually withdraw and be critical all at the same time. Because you're giving yeah. out those angry vibes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. and my words can sound snarky to him. Snarky? Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay. and he feels like I'm nagging. Mm -hmm. Nagging. Yeah. Wow. And the other thing that Timmy said to me this morning that he's never really shared with me before is that he's got like a one to ten gauge on his yeah. tornado system, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Which yeah. I thought was really neat. Yeah. Can you? Oh, it's a meter. Yeah. And it picks up her anger, her fear, whatever it is she's feeling. And, well, especially with the anger, you know, and my senses tell me, my meter tells me on a scale of zero to ten where she is. And so it's sort of how hits, dangerous this is going to be. That's it. So when she hits four, I know it's not that bad. But when it hits seven and up, it's... I'm <laughs> yeah. Out, I'm out of here. Yeah. Right. So, so if you, when you did that exercise in the book, the way your pattern would go, would be, you would be saying something like, Tim, when I hear snarkiness in your voice, right, that's the cue for me, I, I'm out of here, right? Snarkiness and just the tone in right. your voice. Right, I'm out you know. of here. Yep. And then when he's out of there, you, the more, and the more I turn away and exit and get out of here, the more you, what do you do? Feel hurt. And, and either pursue get and more criticize snarky, it, yeah. Or sometimes, or I just, I also just disappear, gone. Right, and in, and at the end of it, that leaves both of you feeling how? Well, I'm totally alone. I'm isolated. I'm alone. I'm abandoned. I'm on my own. And how do you feel in that situation? The same way, self with just self, by myself. Just with you. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And questioning, trying to figure out what it is that I did wrong. And never, pretty much never figuring out what it is that I've done Right. Wrong. I'm disappointing her somehow. Yeah, exactly. Inadequate, bottom line. And, and the other interesting thing that Timmy has shared with me since we have begun to work on this conversation one is the the deeper his meter goes or the higher like if he's his meter tells him that he's hurt me at a level of nine then his my access to him becomes even less because he's gone like this and then he's gone into an igloo and then he's put the cover on the front of the igloo so the distance the more the hurt for me, the greater the distance he, in between us and the higher level of pain for both of us. Right, because the way this is set up, he, on some level, he knows you're hurt. Right. But 
you're being snarky, so he sees you as dangerous, right? And the, For him. Yes. Yeah. And the more, and the ironic thing about that is, the more hurt you get, the more he moves away. Yes. Right? That, and that's awful. And I guess it just, you just hear that it's dangerous, and you're going to hear more and more that there's something wrong with you, you're inadequate, mm -hmm. and you just move away. Yeah, exactly. Right? Right. Keep myself safe. You actually used, Tim, I'm trying to remember when we talked about this, you used an interesting mm -hmm. word, you're a chef, yeah. right? And you, and you used an interesting word that when you hear the snarkiness in her voice, what was it again? I can't... Slice with a knife. And... Right. So her anger is so huge for you. The effect of her anger is so huge, it, it sets up danger signals in your brain, mm -hmm. and you actually feel like she's slicing you with a knife. Yes. Or that I could. If you mm. engaged that I could slice you yeah. with a knife. Mm -hmm. Right down to the core. Mm -hmm. right. And in these moments, I don't even know if you guys can answer this question, <clears throat> what do you say to yourself about the relationship then? I'm like, you know, I've done it again. Um, he's just like my father. I'm going to be invisible to the primary man of my life until I die, you know, and then I'm like, I don't deserve this. I'm out of here. And I start to imagine that I'm leaving. It's horrible. It's horrible for me, Sue, so, you know, because um, Timmy and I were best friends and we adore each other, you know, but and he knows even when I'm talking in a snarky manner or an angry manner, there's hurt in there. He knows on some level there's hurt in there, oh, but he knows. somehow the music that directs the dance is the danger and the anger and yeah, the, yeah. for both of us. Yeah. And we just sort of spiral further and further away from each other, you know? Very often it's so bad for both of us that we just shut right out. Right. And then the next time, we're into this situation again. We haven't resolved this one. And instead of my meter being at two for Timmy, it's instantly at 10. It ju it, which yes. just things just get more and more dangerous and you get more and more vigilant, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And the cycle just gets faster and faster. faster and Tim, and faster. where does your mind go when this is going on? When you're in your <sighs> igloo, all shut down, to, where does your mind, what do you tell yourself? What are totally your protecting myself, I go on total protection mode and try to stay safe as possible you, you say know. to yourself I've just got to protect myself uh, pretty much you know and I try to pick up what it is that I did wrong you know and you say uh, to yourself what did I do wrong what is it and majority of the times I'm not able to pick it off what it is you know, that I did wrong, or, yeah, I keep safe and I go into another room, you know, or change subject. That's one of my strategies is uh, for say, staying safe is getting off topic. <laughs> uh, getting off topic is one of my uh, best strategies. Mm -hmm. But do you, you ever know? go to the place where you just start to sort of give up on the relationship uh, like Kim does, or do you just get totally caught up with just thinking of hunkering down and I've wondered if we were meant to be as a couple and then uh, I I know we are meant to be a couple and uh, it's just a lot of hard work we have to go through <laughs> to get to the other side you know I believe right you know. right so no. The other night, this pattern that you've been talking about and that you've found all these incredible words for, right? Mm -hmm. And you've been so good at doing that. Um, th I think the other night you were saying that this this came up, yeah. right? Yeah, it came so, up. So, um, it was a long, long day for us and we didn't get home till like quarter to seven or something. We hadn't even no. talked about supper. The minute we got in the door, Timmy said, well, I'm going to the dry cleaner, blah, blah, blah. And I just felt completely disconnected. So I, I said uh, to him, okay, tornado watch. And <laughs> I, I stood right in front of him and I took his hand, one of his hands. Yeah. 
as awkward as I felt, oh, and I expressed it to her. I so said, I'm feeling very awkward. Then she said, give me your other hand. <laughs> and I went, no. And so we held the we other hand like face this. Face to face. We ignored the dogs. Everything, everything. It's like, everything. Okay, let's yeah. stay in here with this. <laughs> we're fighting this tornado together, right? Yeah. And sh sh so show me, what did you do? What were you able to say to each other? And we expressed our feelings with yeah. what we were going through. And but she was able to express her... A, I'm not a bound. What were the words? When when you when we come home uh -huh. and you immediately go off uh -huh. into your own space, uh -huh. I feel left out. Yeah. That's that. Those were the words she said. Yeah. And I was able to understand where she was coming from. And that she was trying to stop you guys going into the tornado. Uh -huh. yeah. Right, and so what did you say to her? Can you remember? What, can you tell it to her? I was able to say to you... Tell me, tell me. ...that I'm running to go and leaving you. I don't remember the exact words. You were skirting all yeah. over the place. Well, I just <laughs> yeah. have to go here and I just yeah. have to go I there. I was nervous. Right. And this is really uncomfortable. Awkward. And I just Awkward. kept... Awkward. It holding you awkward. and I said come on to me we yeah. can fight this tornado together mm -hmm. come on mm -hmm. come on my satellite dish is telling me warning 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 and my Doppler was saying the same thing <laughs> so, too, yeah that it's approaching <laughs> yeah so you're saying okay yeah. okay we're gonna do this mm -hmm. right and I said okay so when you go off on your own mm -hmm. without first checking in with me and keeping our connection mm -hmm. I feel abandoned by you yeah. And then you said to me, to me. I don't remember. Oh. What do you want to say right now, Tim? When, when she says this to you, I mean, normally what you would do here if she was just a little bit snarkier is you'd run, right? Yes. So maybe you can tell her that some part of you wants to run, but what? I hear you and I can understand what you're feeling and what you're going through and I'm not leaving, and uh, I'm not abandoning you. And you know? that you know, and that what she's trying to do is stop you from getting caught in this tornado, right? Where you'd both feel so alone. And I'm not gonna let the tornado in. Yeah. You know, I think that's what I- hunkered down, eh? Yeah. We're a team. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And we're a darn good storm watcher team. Eh? <laughs> You're really using conversation one, mm. right, in the most incredible way. Mm. Um, do you feel, I mean, Kim did this. She said, uh oh, tornado watch. This is one of these moments where I can get snarky and you usually go away and then we just get stuck and the snarkier mm. I get, the more you go away, right? Mm -hmm. And do you feel like you could call that and say, hey, you know what? I'm not sure it would look like. What what would it look like for you to call the tornado watch? Pretty much the same. I have no problem identifying it and catching it. Mm -hmm. The problem I have is with the holding hands, you know? Well, that might not be you your know? style to start by holding hands. It's, there's something I, I don't know, leaving me feel vulnerable or, you know? But I have no problems Catch if I'm aware of it, you know? So what would you be able to say to, what do you think you'd be able to say to Kim? Tornadoes <laughs> approaching, oh, okay. you know? Yeah. Once we grounded together and stayed connected, then we openly went off and did our own thing. Yeah. It's not like I have to sit on top of them for the whole night, you know? No. But, and sometimes, you know, I think, you can't, you won't be able to catch it immediately, it's going on. Sometimes it'll do its thing, but even if you can go back afterwards yeah. and say, hey, you know what, that was a tornado, and it hit both of us. Yeah. That's really different than saying, you know, you are always going off and leaving me alone, and, well, you are always being so snarky, right? It's, that's a pretty different shift, huh? mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I get the sense you both feel really good about that. Very good, yeah. very good. Yeah. Right. A new beginning. 
A new beginning? It's a new beginning in our relationship. Things uh, really started to go wrong just after the twins were born. Um, they're 21 now. So um, I, we were, they were premature. Um, so we were really busy when they first came home. John was quite ill after they came home. Um, we ended up moving, changing jobs. John was working an awful lot. Um, when the kids got older, it was just really busy. So we stopped looking at our relationship and stopped working on our relationship. We used to say all the time that uh, that we needed to, that re a relationship took uh, work and we stopped doing that. We're talking about conversation one this afternoon. What's the name for your pattern? Um, well, we call it the nothing, the nothing. The nothing. The nothing. nothing. Because what we concluded after looking at it for a while was that we start at a spot, we, we go through a whole lot of steps in the dance, and we always end up back where we started really having accomplished nothing. <laughs> so it's the nothing dance. I also okay. use nothing a lot during <laughs> the dance, too. It's yes, I think I remember with the, when we met to discuss you coming and doing this that you use, and nothing is, you say nothing at a particular time, don't you? It's yeah, well, when I'm, um, when we're doing this dance, I, uh, I usually sh shut down and, and just stay uh, separate. And John will then come upstairs and poke and prod and ask me, you know, what's the matter? What's wrong? What's, you know, and I'll say, nothing, nothing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Are you okay? Nothing. <laughs> so. Uh, and, and my normal response is, you know, we've been we've been married for 28 years. I know when it's not nothing, and that's there's something. You know, there's something going I on. I know there's something, and so it's okay. Well, what is it? Nothing. nothing. <laughs> and and, that? and that starts us. Yeah. Right. And what's that like for you when you know there's something and she says there's nothing? Uh, it's it's frustrating. It's extremely frustrating. It's it's, uh, and it's it's a little. Um, it's a little like being shut out, you know. I think I have something to offer. I can help, and, and I don't want your help, you know. And there's nothing wrong, and but there, I know. There, right. But I don't know whether it's me that's caused the nothing, or something else has caused the nothing. So it, and it is also then, well, what have I done? So can I, you know? So we get into this um, right from step one, where we're at loggerheads and. What 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 is it that gets me? to start this whole dance and I I still don't know there's times where I'm I feel all of a sudden I feel I'm I'm alone um, in the relationship or I'm well I just I'm just unsatisfied there's and something you, you talked about that sometimes it comes up if John's maybe watching sports downstairs and but for you you just know that the first thing you're aware of is some sort of sense of aloneness right yeah, there, there's it's some sort of sense of that. It's, um, uh, you know, all of a sudden I'll just, oh, he should know. And that's another thing is I say nothing because he should know. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have to tell him. Right? I don't well, need to tell I should. Him. <laughs> but you, he should know what's going on with me. I shouldn't that's have right. to. That's right. Yeah, yeah okay. he should know. And... Um, so when you get that sense of separateness, maybe we can just map this mm -hmm. out for, for folks. Sure. When you get that sense of separateness, you, what do you do? If he's downstairs in the basement, you? Well, I, I, uh, I make it pretty clear that, <laughs> that, How do you do that? that? I do that by sighing or stomping or um, just, you know, the old, the old cold shoulder. Um, yeah, it, there's... There's no direct. No, I'm not direct. And I, that's one of the thing, things I think that stirs this nothing on. Yes. Is, it, is yes. that I'm waiting for a, a clear message. I, I'm upset about this, or something's wrong about this, or, or even I'm upset and I just need time to stew. So just let me stew and. Well, now and, that we've you know, said it, I That will. kind of stuff. <laughs> um, but there's no directness. There's subtle cues, and there's, you know, and as Marilee says, she expects that I should know. And, and even, I get to the point, I get so frustrated, even when I think I do know, 
I'm not biting, you know, like. I, <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you're being set up. I feel like I'm being set up. Yeah, or, because... or, or at least at least I'm feeling like this shouldn't be all my task. Right. You know, we've got to do more. So when you see her stomping and sighing and you're getting this cold shoulder message, then you do, then that's what she does in the dance. She suddenly feels alone and she sort of stomps and sighs, but she doesn't feel comfortable giving you a direct message. And then you... One of two things happen. Either I go and I prod to get to ask her. You prod. Which, which leads to nothing. nothing. So you be, And then she shuts you out right. from your point of view. Or... Right? I just say, well, it's not tonight. I'm not. I'm not getting caught in this crazy. So then you tonight. stay separate. So I just stay separate, which just doesn't help either because it doesn't solve the she problem. She keeps going. Well, she's persistent as hell. <laughs> Excuse me. So, or you get angry. Or I get angry. Yeah. I, that's been known to happen on and, occasion too. And then, can you help me? What's the next step? You come and stay. You come and prod. You come and prod, and then you get shut out, and then you get angry, and then what happens? Well. We'll probably do that part of the dance a couple of times, um, and then eventually I get very angry and I just say, "Forget it," and I and I disengage completely, and I I'll go off somewhere else and I'll you know mumble under my breath and you know have all these thoughts about you know, I'm sick and tired of you know being in a relationship like this, and then, and that goes on for. It's never gone on for very long, but that goes on for a little while. Yeah. And then we just we seem to just gravitate back together and, and say, okay, that that's over. When we move on, but we never have solved sort of the dance or figured the dance out. We're we've known for a long time that we're in a that there's a pattern here. We've we've yeah. We've even talked about this recurring step or process, right. but we've never really understood what it was about and some of the reading has helped us understand that there is a there is a reason why that happens and it and it's not necessarily because either of us are doing anything tragically wrong right. it's just that we're we're missing um, the cues that are getting thrown out or we're, right. or we're stuck in that's how I respond to that and so right. it, so that's that's been helpful I I find it I find that it's when we get to that that point that log, where we've sort of reached loggerheads. One of the great frustrations for me is it is I I do this kind of stuff in terms of interventions and problem solving professionally, and and, and it involves uh, a lot of of interpersonal dynamics and relations. And, that's, and I'm 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 good at what I do. I'm a disaster when it's personal. When it's right. when it's our relationship, I, you know, I couldn't argue my way out of out of anything. Oh yeah, you can argue. <laughs> so you help me if I'm thinking of the first little piece in the um, the conversation one where I ask you guys to think about uh, identifying when we get stuck in this pattern. You call it the nothing. When we get stuck in this pattern. Um, the I do something. And the more I do this, the more you and then I, mm -hmm. right? If I just asked you to fill that in here for this nothing pattern, Meredith, what would you say? I uh, withdraw. I you, close you, down. You, you send out signals, but then you withdraw. Yeah. And when I withdraw and close down, I, I poke. John comes in to I'll fix. come in and I poke. poke. <laughs> so what's going on? Like, or like what's the matter? Or, try to fix. Well, I try to find out what needs to be dealt with. Yeah. And because you say, I want to fix it. I want to fix it. Right? That's right. Um, yeah. And and I want. Or I want. You I want. To talk I want. To I me. want this to get solved. Let's. Right. We can. We can solve this. And the thing. more you poke, the more you withdraw. The and more I get, the more I just prefer to just sit and do nothing and, 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 and get, no and get I get angry. frustrated I do get I get frustrated and, and I get yeah just I do I get angry with John and uh, you know I always I say oh you, you you know you're here you're here to fix me and it's my issue and stuff and um, I don't think that we're mad at each other we're just we're ticked off at the pattern I think that's an incredibly profound thing you just said I think one I think gets very tricky is that when you get caught in this, you it's just so frustrating. You're caught in this drama, you don't understand it. It's like being on a treadmill mm -hmm. that 
you're just massively frustrated and so that all gets it. put onto the partner yeah. when really you know what we're talking about here is that it's the pattern that becomes the problem one of the important things is to be able to see that it's nobody's fault that you get caught in these we all get caught in these hmm. and it's nothing to do with being unskilled it's to do with how important you know, this relationship is and we get caught in these patterns and you know they end up uh, just perpetuating themselves and keeping us separate right so that's yeah. why we have to be able to slow them down and step out of them and not have them in control so that we can create this platform of safety The second conversation is finding the raw spots. The first goal here is to go past the surface anger and pinpoint the soft feelings, the sensitive spots playing out underneath the demon dialogue and that keep the demon dialogue going. The second goal is to help partners share these raw spots so they can each learn about each other's sensitivities and how they trigger these sensitivities in their lover. The third goal is for partners to begin to feel compassion and see the other person as less dangerous. When this happens, safety grows. Remember, raw spots are always about sadness, feeling ashamed, or fear. There are really two key fears. One is, I will be deprived of connection with you.